What's the story of Pipe and Thimble? Oh, the story of Pipe and Thimble is that in the early 70s, my parents, Dick and Peg Austin, started a handmade dollhouse miniatures business. Dollhouses were very big back then. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was the pipe because he smoked a pipe and my mom was the thimble. She did all the sewing. Uh, my mother got sick and I took over being the thimble and my dad and I worked together on the business and it was fabulous working with my dad and we had so much fun and we did these huge dollhouse shows every weekend um, and it was it was just such a, a great combination of being creative and getting time to spend with my parents as an adult. Um, my, my parents are both very creative people and they always were making things so that was part of my childhood experience with them um, as was gardening um, and so we lost them both in the summer of 20 let's see in 2002 um, my dad died in May and my mother died in August but I was very happy that my children had gotten to know them um, because they were very special people so when Ellie and I decided to start the publishing company Pipe and Thimble, um, because of who my parents were and the way they treated people, the kind of people that they were, we wanted that to be the basis of how we dealt with people, um, to give independent authors the respect they deserve, to give them the support they deserve, and to help them move forward. And so everything is infused with my parents in one way or another, um, whether it's leftover tools of my dad's that we use to put things on the wall. Um, we have this garden that we're building um, basically in their memory and it's a teaching garden but there's things here that represent my parents there's a peace rose by the front door um, because we had one in my childhood backyard and so everywhere I've lived there's been a peace rose in memory of my parents so that's the history of Pipe and Thimble and that's why we are Pipe and Thimble so first you had a publishing company and then we started the publishing company again because um, writing is very solitary mm -hmm hobby or, or pursuit, mm -hmm. um, self-publishing is very lonely. Mm -hmm. um, you do it all online, all by yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to learn as you go. There's nobody to help you. And it's, it's just kind of daunting. Mm -hmm. um, so as independent authors who were doing this by ourselves, we saw ways that we could help other people. Mm -hmm. um, we also saw a lot of people taking advantage of independent mm -hmm. authors, um, charging them to publish as a small press. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should never pay your press to publish your books. Right. Right. So we decided that we wanted to create this small press to allow independent authors to enjoy the same control that they have, but to help them do it better, to give them promotion, to give them the imprint so it doesn't look like they're self-published, mm -hmm. and to give them all these things like editing and cover design that they don't have to pay for out of pocket. We take care of all of that for them. So they can focus on the writing, getting the best book out that they want to get out, but we also support them after the launch of the book with getting them reviews and trying to get them um, book events mm -hmm. in their area, whether they're in California or Massachusetts mm -hmm. or wherever they are. Um, we do one book at a time. Um, we take our time. And like I said, we provide everything, editing, formatting, cover design. Um, and we take care of paying for all of that mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. so that they can focus on their book. What are the genres you are interested in? We really haven't limited that too mm -hmm. much. We um, do everything from children's books, illustrated children's books, to middle grade YA um, we would do basically any genre with the exception of erotica, mm -hmm. and that's only because we don't read it, so mm -hmm. we don't feel we can do the author's mm -hmm. justice. It's mm -hmm. the same reason we don't carry that genre in the mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. um, we do have other small presses that we really respect mm -hmm. who specialize in, say, urban fantasy mm -hmm. or horror mm -hmm. that we might offer them first mm -hmm. to see if they want to publish it. And then if they are backlogged or they're not taking anything new at the moment, then we would consider those as well. There are rumors that the ebook market is slowing down. I think that there's a couple things happening. Um, I think people do like to hold a book. Mm -hmm. There is something special about holding that book in your hand. The other thing about ebooks is you don't own them. And I think that the perception in the beginning was I'm buying a book mm -hmm. and people are beginning to realize they're renting a book. Mm -hmm. It's it's not theirs and it can go away at any time. 
The other problem with ebooks, I think, is the pricing. There is a huge discrepancy because a lot of authors are driven to um, give away ebooks or price them at like 99 cents. It makes it harder for other authors who don't want to decrease yeah. the price. Mm -hmm. So you have kind of these two things going on at the same time, and it makes it hard for readers, I think, to make decisions. Um, people put serial books out mm -hmm. at 99 cents yeah. a shot. Uh, there's a lot of cliffhangers that readers don't like. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and there's also, there's been a lot of pushback too because of some things that people did that were not exactly legitimate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to push their sales, putting their um, their table of contents in the back, for yeah. example. So with Amazon pushing back on a lot of that, um, I, I just think that market is definitely in flux right now. I think it will settle out. I think there is a market for ebooks. I love books. I have a bookstore. Mm -hmm. I have an e-reader for when I travel because mm -hmm. I can't carry a yeah, pile of yeah, books with yeah, me. Sure. As someone who runs a small press, uh, what is your advice for indie authors if they want to succeed? I mean, you know. I think the biggest thing is taking the time to put out the best product you can put out. To me, one of the highest compliments I received when I put my first novel out, someone who used to work for Barnes and Noble walked over. She picked it up, mm -hmm. which means she liked the cover. Mm -hmm. She turned it over, mm -hmm. and then she opened it. And it took her a while until she went to the copyright page, and then she was surprised it was self-published. And that was a yeah. huge yeah. compliment right. for me. Right. I think it's very important to look at books that are traditionally published and, and strive for the little things mm -hmm. that, that allow the reader to perceive this mm -hmm. as a quality mm -hmm. book. And you'd be surprised what it is. It's justifying your text. It's, mm -hmm. you know, laying it out so your chapters start on the same side. It's having numbers start in the right place. Little things that change the perception of the reader to being a quality book over not a quality book. Take the time and whenever possible the money to edit the book, not yourself. Um, I'm a person who does editing. Mm -hmm. I do not edit my own books. Mm -hmm. You can't see your mistakes because your brain sees yeah. the correct thing, the, you know, what you meant, mm -hmm. not what you put mm -hmm. down. So making sure you get somebody who, who knows what they're doing to edit the book. Use beta readers and listen to them. Mm -hmm. um, have them write notes as they read. I love this part. I don't understand this part. What does this word mean? That's going to tell you what other readers are going to see. And, and listen to the advice. Sometimes there's really quality advice in reviews. Um, you know, read your one-star and two-star reviews. Not because you're not a good writer. Not because, mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't be writing. But pay attention to them only insofar as you can learn. Um, learn how to write. Learn the writing rules. If you're going to break them, you should know what they are. And there's nothing wrong with breaking the rules, but you should know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and little other little things stay intense stay in your point of view um, you know switching back and forth from point of view is very exhausting for the reader but make sure you're doing it right if you do it um, if you're writing first person present mm -hmm. you can't say I didn't know at the time <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> you know right. things that are very yeah. jarring so that's where beta readers and editors mm -hmm. come in and it's very very important to use those back to the bookshop yes it's new it's yes oh, it's brand new so it's you, brand new you had like a huge opening last week we had a fabulous menu. opening if i could have described what i wanted to have happen it was a hundred times better the community here is so excited to have a shop here um the independent authors have done an amazing job at promoting the fact that their books are in the store and they're seeing that we're promoting their books are in the store um and and just the support of everybody we had so many people here we were selling from the moment we cut the ribbon to mm -hmm. the moment we closed at the end of the day we have had buying customers every day this week and we blew every myth of indie publishing out of the water people will come and shop in a store with books that they've never heard of the authors people will pay full price for indie books so people you've... will leave reviews for indie books um, we've had an amazing response so you've got only exclusively exclusively self-published and small press books that's all we have and we're the only bookstore of our kind in the world 
Um, we have books from all over the world. Because we use print on demand, yeah. they can be in Israel, uh-huh. order their books from Create Space, uh-huh. and they will ship from the U.S. to us. So it's okay. much less expensive okay. for them to send us their books. Um, so we have books from Sri Lanka, Israel, South Africa, England, Canada, all over the world, as well as the U.S. But yet the space is limited. It's beautiful and it's cozy and I love it. But yet it's limited. So you have some, I guess, selection of the books you We We actually, honestly, have not curated the books. Mm-hmm. Um, we are taking the books. Okay. We only take five copies of each title. Okay. We are committed to every single book facing out. And this is something we do different. Okay. Um, in regular bookstores okay. or other bookstores, publishers pay yeah. to have their book face out. Yeah, sure. Every single book in our store faces out at, in at least one place in the store mm-hmm. because the cover is what grips you. Mm-hmm. And they work so hard to get the perfect mm-hmm. cover for their book. Mm-hmm. Authors deserve to have the cover seen. Mm-hmm. Um, so we will sacrifice certain things. We have uh, a lovely Victorian conversation mm-hmm. bench. If we have to, that will go mm-hmm. so that we can put more books. We will go up higher. We will create different displays. We have a room off of the shop we call the room of making where we do our own handmade businesses we're already discussing moving that out and moving all of the music in there because we've started selling music from independent musicians so we will do what we have to do to get the books in here i feel that if the book is a quality book it will get reviews that state that People will respond. People will continue to buy books by the author. If things are a little less quality, but the book, the story is gripping, it, it'll all come out in the wash. But we really are not taking books and, and saying, no, we don't want this. Um, with the exception of one genre, we are accepting yeah. indie books, you know. So I, I want to have my indie book. Awesome. Your, so what, what, what do I need to do? What do you do? We have a straightforward consignment contract. Mm-hmm. We take um, up to five copies of mm-hmm. each title. Mm-hmm. We don't limit the number. Mm-hmm. We do not charge a shelf fee. Mm-hmm. We handle sales tax. And at the end of the year, you will get a 1099 for your taxes. We take care of everything. When we get the book in, we photograph it and tag the author that we just got this in. Mm-hmm. When we've got it on a shelf... We will again, here's where the, you know, these books are. And as people buy them, we take pictures and we post tagging the author. So the author has all of those to share as well for their own promotion. And we do this on Facebook and on Twitter. This, this sounds like made in heaven. That's so, what we want. I don't know who sent you. But <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason that this happened is because... We struggled to get our books in stores. We struggled to have events. Mm -hmm. And as indie authors, we pay for everything, including our books, right? So if you go to a bookstore and they want to charge you $400 for a signing, $100 to have your book on the shelf, how can you do that as an indie author? We know what that feels like. So again, we go back to our roots. Mm -hmm. We treat people the way we want to be treated. And I, I will say, somebody said to me, I will never put my books on consignment in a store because they just sit there and the store has no incentive to sell them. And that's true in other bookstores. That's not true in our store because everything is on consignment. I have to sell three books to make as much as you do mm-hmm. in one book. Mm-hmm. And we did that on purpose. Okay. Um, we want our authors to actually make money mm-hmm. on their books in our store as well as getting their names recognized as well as getting their books sold. Um, and we go a step further, if I can. Um, we started this last week, and we're going to continue this. Um, at the grand opening, we gave out cards with lollipops on them. And it said, feed an author, leave a review. Yeah. And we asked everybody to go on Amazon and state in the review, I purchased this mm-hmm. in a local indie bookstore. Because Amazon likes those disclaimers if yeah. it's not a verified purchase. Uh-huh. Uh, the reviews are bread and butter for our authors. Yeah, so right. it doesn't end with the sale. We ask everybody to leave a review. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had authors who shared that and who said, can we use that idea? Of course they can. And then the next one's going to be little cards with lifesavers and say, mm-hmm. be a lifesaver, leave a review. Because you have to change it, right? Because yeah, yeah, if you do the same thing, yeah, people, people ignore yeah, but, yeah, yeah. it. So we're going to change it up, but we're going to have that in every bag, mm-hmm. you know, asking them to leave a review. Um, we're going to have people, if they leave a review, we're going to have little um, cookies 
with a thing that says I fed an author and if they leave a review and they show it to us we're going to give them a special cookie to thank them um, so we want to continue the relationship that's, beyond the sale yeah, because we know like, that's important to our yeah, authors yeah. plus you're opening the doors of pipe and symbol for authors like you did today to have book absolutely and a book and signing is there's no cost mm -hmm. for a book mm -hmm. signing um, we will promote it again across social media we do press releases mm -hmm. And it's just whatever books they sell are on the same split. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the only fee that there is, is the 70-30 mm -hmm. split. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you've, you've already booked the next event? We have events already oh. booked into mm -hmm. the fall. We have another book signing next week. We have um, other things that we're doing. One of the things that we know as business owners is you have to get people in the store, mm -hmm. but you have to get them to come back. Yeah. So in addition to the fact that we have all these fabulous books, We're going to have events that are and are not book related. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to work to bring different demographics of people into the store because they'll see the books. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have this innovation blend panel discussion that will be video cast podcast and live mm -hmm. um, and we're going to talk about where art meets technology mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. going to have open mic poetry nights every first Friday we're going to have local mission uh, musicians on second Fridays third Fridays we want to do art galleries mm -hmm. particularly for artists who are just starting out who've never had that experience we want to give them one under their belt mm -hmm. Um, fourth Fridays, we're going to ask people to unplug and come play board games. Um, but again, they'll be in the store. They'll see yeah, the books. The books yeah. um, so everything is a, is a plan to get people into the store to see the books. We're going to use the garden space. Um, it's a teaching garden. We're going to be having plant sales because we're raising things from seed. We're going to have um, how, classes on how to save things from seed, how to grow your own food. Um, we're going to have all different types of handmade classes mm -hmm. um, for kids, for adults. But again, they see the books. Um, we offer our space as a meeting space mm -hmm. because a lot of, um, especially nonprofit groups, there's no free space to yeah. meet. Yeah. We offer our space after hours for meeting spaces because again, they'll see the books. So you're helping authors. How can we help you? spread the word um we are a little out of the way we like to say we're off the beaten path but that's where magic happens yeah totally. um so we the biggest thing is to spread the word to get people excited to get people out here not only to buy the books but to think about what they could do in the space mm -hmm. um what we want is for people to say could i do this here mm -hmm. Or if I want to do this, how would I make that happen? And then we make it happen for them. Um, independent filmmakers, if they want to screen in an intimate setting a new film and get feedback, we would love to do that here. Um, we would love to do all sorts of art galleries. We have a tattoo artist who's interested in doing an art gallery. Um, so we want to be a space where people say, what can I do here? As opposed to, no, you can't do that here. Wow, that sounds incredible. And your biggest challenge right now as a, as a small publisher and also like as an independent As a story. publisher, it's funds. Um, a lot of money goes into publishing mm -hmm. a quality book, and so that's why we do one at a time, and we have to do it when we have the funds. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's really getting the word out about the store. Mm -hmm. um, we really want to make this a place where indie authors feel like their books are loved, they're getting picked up, they're getting read, and they're getting reviewed, and they're in a safe place that's going to move the authors forward and that's so for us it's word of mouth and of course you know any kind of promotion and marketing support thank you thank you